Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm very happy to introduce you to Emily Haidt, the Digital Editorial Assistant for the National Museum of Women in the Arts, and also Marla Kurlansky, Project Coordinator for Digital Engagement. They will be talking today about five women artists. And um, I'm going to be watching Twitter for questions and comments. Uh, so throw them out there. I'll, I'll be grabbing them. Um, and take it away. And you can yeah. use the hashtag five women artists to ask your questions. That's how we'll, we'll pull it in. Yes. So hi, thanks for joining us this morning. I know it's the last day of the conference, so we appreciate you guys coming out. Um, so this is our campaign, uh, Can You Name Five Women Artists, which was our viral campaign for Women's History Month. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background, um, NIMWA, as we call the National Museum of Women in the Arts in DC, NIMWA for short, was founded by Wilhelmina Cole Holiday and her husband, um, who set out to collect artwork by um, women, especially when they found out that they weren't seeing them on gallery walls elsewhere. Um, and usually people would ask, like, why do, why do women artists need their own museum? And she would reply, can you name five women artists? And most couldn't. So with that question, um, it's kind of been part of our, our core um, since the beginning. And that delves us into Women's History Month. So Women's History Month is complicated for us um, because after all, we're celebrating women's creative contributions all year round. Um, but it is a time of the year where we get increased attention. People are, have more interest in our programs and the events that are happening at the museum. So we wanted to capitalize on that attention to advance our mission in a fun and engaging way without a dedicated budget, of course. Um, so insert the magical tools of social media. And uh, we could use social media to pose the question um, to our growing followers and encourage them to challenge other people. And it would bring awareness to the fact that the question isn't as easy to answer as it seems. There will be a test at the end, by the way. So start thinking. So the idea for the hashtag um, came from a member of our marketing team uh, who then pulled in our digital engagement team and we brainstormed together with our cross-departmental social media working group. Um, our marketing team then drafted a fact sheet that described what we were trying to do and each person reached out to other museum colleagues. Um, to start, we started local um, with museums like the Phillips Collection, the National Gallery of Art, and the Smithsonian American Art Museum. And then we branched out and cold pitched the idea to some bigger museums outside of DC, like LACMA, the Hammer, um, the Jewish Museum, which led us to even more contacts. Thanks, Jaja, if you're listening ever. <laughs> um, and once we had a few museums on board to participate uh, in the campaign, we used it to share work by women artists in their collection. And then we were also able to get some traction in the press, which was really helpful. And uh, we also wrote a blog post introducing the campaign, uh, shared it from our social media account, and encouraged our partners to do the same. And here's just a few kind of examples of some of the, uh, the press that we got. Yep. Sorry. Okay. We did it already. That's yeah. good. Um, so we really didn't know what to expect. Um, we'd never really done like a big campaign before. Um, we had spent a lot of time, you know, pitching the media and reaching out to our colleagues, and we had noticed that some people had started using the hashtag, you know, based on articles that they'd seen, but it was, you know, it was like a little bit here and there, and we just, we really had no idea if it was going to be a complete bust, and, <laughs> you know, we would just kind of forget that this had ever happened. Um, so the morning of March 1st, you know, we all kind of like published our first you know, one tweet and one Instagram and a Facebook post just sort of like announcing like, this has begun. Um, and it actually was really crazy. And we found that like, there was just tons and tons and tons all day long. Um, by the end of the day, we, you know, we're all just sort of like scrolling through social media all day, like, oh my God, people are actually doing this. Um, so at the end of the day, I created a storify of just hundreds of things that people had shared that was so excited, you know, and kind of drafted up a little memo to the whole staff saying like, by the way, this We're thing, this. this thing is <laughs> happening now. Here's, here's what you missed if you weren't paying attention. Um, we were all really, really excited. Um, the MoMA posted something and linked to our blog post and we were like, oh, us, really? So it was, it was really exciting, and there were a few more news articles, and we realized that we were not actually prepared for <laughs> what had happened. So on the second day, we realized that we didn't actually have anything in place to track the campaign to be able to measure its success. So we did a quick scramble, did some research, you know, what 
hashtag tracking service can we use? So we paid for one. Um, we ended up having to pay a little bit of extra money to capture back tweets um, so that we could include those in our analytics. Um, we published a homepage graphic on our website because we realized we should we should actually like say that we're doing this publicly, you know, not just on social media. We created some, you know, takeaways that we could put in our galleries and encourage people who came to our museum to use it. We just really had no idea. And so day two was a bit of a scramble. And shout out to our editor, Elizabeth Lynch, who helped me strip out those artist signatures from works in our collection. Um, since I'm a little bit of a Photoshop novice, that, that took some time. Yeah. So here's just like a few of the many, many things. These are mostly from Instagram. Um, we were all screenshotting like crazy and sending each other things like, oh my God, like, you know, this museum jumped in. So it was just a massive amount of content. Um, these are a few of our very favorites. Um, there were a lot of reactions that were really heartfelt, you know, like as a woman going into the field of art history, this is super <laughs> important. And then there were some that were just really funny. Yeah, so we're gonna read out a couple just because there are a few that are our favorites. Uh, one person tweeted, if you go home with someone and they can't name five women artists, don't sleep with them. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, if you can't name five women artists, you probably also can't name five artists who are not Ninja Turtles. So people had a sense of humor about yeah. it. <laughs> um, so in terms of the tracking, um, you know, we realized pretty early on that this was a thing, that it was getting us a lot of recognition, and we really needed to keep track of what was going on because, you know, as you know, in a museum, you always need to be accountable to your board and your constituents to say, you know, these are the measurable successes that we've had, you know, so that you can leverage it into other things. So we had a few big spikes based on the, the hash tracking software that we were using. Obviously, the first day was probably the biggest. Um, March 8th was International Women's Day. Um, so that was also another, like, really big, you know, opportunity to push it. Um, and then on the last day, you know, we were doing a lot of, you know, tweeting out our favorites, highlighting other museums that were participating, reminding people that this is ending, so make sure you, you know, share your content before it's over. Um, it took a lot of work to keep track of everything, which we hadn't really considered. Um, you know, like everybody else, we have normal day jobs. We have things that we need to be doing all day, but suddenly we all found ourselves just on social media all day, you know, like saving blog posts and writing down new museums that had participated. Um, so we created a few different ways of keeping track besides the hash tracking. Um, we did a lot of manual, you know, just saving stuff, searching the hashtag on Google to see what we could find, um, saving individual museums in a list so that we could kind of report on which other institutions were participating. Um, we hit a few really awesome milestones. We hit 10,000 Instagram followers which we started with uh, about 1,500. So yeah. it, was, it was a huge jump for us, and Instagram was sort of our newest platform. So it was an incredible way to boost our numbers and get you know, more recognition for that. Um, we crossed 20,000 Twitter followers, and some of our favorite museums started following us on social <laughs> media, which we were really excited about. I definitely grammed that from my personal account, where I was like, I can, I'm done now, right? Yeah, they so as you can see, there was a lot of internal excitement, um, you know. Yes, this was one night that we, we were all like up late in our beds, just like screenshotting things from our phones, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not going to sleep until we get two more followers on Instagram, and once it finally happened, um, once one of our colleagues woke up her husband and was like, you're not following us yet, are you? So like, we have one more to get after that, and then that's a little thread of um, everyone celebrating. <laughs> Um, so the other thing that worked really well for us was that we had a lot going on in March. Um, you know, March is our busiest month since it's Women's History Month. Um, but there were a lot of other kind of social media friendly things that kind of kept everything flowing really nicely. So we held an instant meet on International Women's Day on March 8th. So we had a lot of people come into the gallery, take a tour. We encouraged them to, you know, tweet and Instagram and share um, we held a program on women in science and technology, which was otherwise a, a regularly scheduled project or uh, event, but the organizers decided to make it 
five women artists related and kind of challenge people to name, in addition to five women artists, five women scientists or, you know, five women in tech or five women who cross all three of those off. Um, we also participated in two of Mar Dixon's initiatives, which are, you know, usually very popular and um, another really great way just to get a lot of visibility for the things that we were sharing. Um, so there are some other museums that came up with some fantastic and creative programming um, around five women artists, which was very exciting for us. Uh, the Columbus Museum of Art created a brochure um, to guide people to women artists in their collection, um, which was awesome. The Decker Library at MICA and Torpedo Factory uh, challenged library visitors to uh, write out their favorites. And uh, RISD pledged to feature art by diverse artists all months of the year and not just in these like designated Women's History Month months. And these are the kinds of things that are, you know, like this is the actual like execution of our mission. You know, it's fun and it's social media, but to have other institutions kind of advocating for women artists in a wider context is just amazing. Definitely not what we expected at right. all. Um, so when all was said and done for our statistics, um, more than 370 cultural organizations ended up participating, um, which includes art museums, libraries, and galleries from over 20 countries. Um, more than 11,000 individuals um, shared on Twitter or Instagram, probably even more than that. We weren't really able to track Facebook very well. Um, there were th thir sorry, 3,300 Instagram posts and more than 23,000 tweets. Um, 40 different articles appeared in the news, you know, from big names like the Huffington Post, Artnet, The Atlantic, and all of that helped just continuously fuel the momentum. Um, and we found, you know, just from searching, there may be more, at least 60 different blog posts from museums and individuals around the world, you know, talking about their artists or sharing what the campaign means to them. Um, and that includes in different languages as well. Um, so this is kind of the overview of where everybody came from. Um, in terms of the work of tracking things, um, I made this map like completely manually. Um, I was saving people from Instagram and Twitter as they showed up and I would write them down on a little spreadsheet and where, you know, like what city and country they were in, you know, because we could add people to, you know, automatic Twitter lists and that kinds of thing, but Twitter can't identify like who's an individual versus who's an institution. So that was all just like me late at night obsessively writing things down and then uploading it to Google um, because we were all just so excited to be able to share how far this was going. Uh, so this is kind of our, our general recipe for the campaign and uh, those are cookies inspired by artworks from our collection that were at our uh, International Women's Day Instameet, which was hilarious. <laughs> We've really embraced that we are the Women's Museum and we will have cookies at these events. Um, the, the creepy face is based on a Micheline Thomas. Yes. I'm going to work on my skills. <laughs> um, so what made Five Women Artists successful beyond our wildest dreams was that the concept was simple, the participation was easy, it was a low to no barrier way to participate. Um, we banded together with other museums to amplify the message. And one of the things that's discussed a lot at MCN is the, the power of collaboration between museums. Um, so it was really nice to actually feel that camaraderie, um, and we, we'd never really done anything to this scale before. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a great shared strategy. Yeah, and we, we found that it's, you know, like, we just should never underestimate how much, you know, social media managers at other museums are also looking for content, they're looking for things to share, so we might as well partner up. So uh, for next year, we want to make it bigger and better. Um, so we had 370 culture institu cultural institutions participating this year, and we're trying to get to 500 uh, in March of 2017. So if you're interested in participating, um, please like let us know in advance, too. Obviously, you can jump on, but it's nice to know a head count of who is going to be sharing content before then. Um, and that's a little screenshot of when we were actually trending for the first time ever um, on Twitter. Two <laughs> so spaces below. Drump. Yes, which is quite an achievement. So reach out. This is another one of my favorite shares. <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time. Um, it's by an artist named Hazel Myers. So please reach out. We're also going to be tweeting a link to a form to fill out if you want to let us know that you're going to be participating. Thank you.